Hi students. So yesterday we learned about cover letters, how to write a good cover letter, what are strengths of cover letters, what are some areas that we could revise about cover letters, and I had you independently read a cover letter and kind of critique it as if you were the hiring manager. As promised, today we're going to talk about the college essay, um, how to write a good college essay, what should be in a college essay, um, why we put it there, um, an interesting one, what admissions officers kind of think about very cliche topics for college essays, and then we'll do the same things we did yesterday. We'll read two exemplar college essays, so two really strong college essays, and we'll do the same thing we did yesterday. We will review it. We'll find the strengths of it, and then we'll find maybe areas that we could suggest for some sort of improvement. At the end of today, I'll show you the Google Form assignment, which is just going to be to read one college essay individually like you did the cover letter yesterday, and then answering a series of questions about it again, like you did yesterday. So all of this should seem really familiar. Tomorrow, we'll start brainstorming work for both a cover letter and a college admissions essay. And then that means that on Thursday, the following day, we're going to start writing and start a rough draft for either our cover letter or our college admissions essay. So by Thursday, you choose what you would like to do based on the draft work that we've done and what we've looked at and our own futures. Um, so let's just jump right into it, getting started on the college essay. A good time for students to begin working on their essays is the summer before senior year, experts say, when homework and extracurriculars aren't taking up too much time and mental energy. Um, so for right now, this is your homework and your extracurriculars because there's not a lot going on. So I thought it'd be the perfect time to do it with my help um, and the help and support of the staff while we're still here. What is the college essay? It is um, a supplement, essentially. It's a supplemental essay um, to help the college get to know you a little bit better as a potential student of theirs. So it's usually information that you wouldn't list on your common application or your application in general. It's something that you develop. Um, it gives the college a little bit more of an understanding of who you are as a person. And it usually tells a story of some sort. So it shows how a certain life event shaped you. It shows an understanding that you've come to. Um, as it says here, um, a supplemental essay, typically shorter than a main essay. How long should it be? It says um, there's no strict word limits, but generally they want it to be 650 words or less, which isn't really a lot. That's about a page, a page and a half. Um, some are as little as like 250 words, and then some um, need to be a little longer to tell the story. So we're going to be working a bit in the next couple days on how to pick a college essay topic and what strategies to kind of use when approaching that. Um, but it says here, it is not a complete autobiography. So you're not telling the whole story of your life. My best advice that I can give you is to focus on one specific moment or interest of yours and develop that into some sort of understanding or some sort of realization or lesson that you learned from it. It recommends brainstorming potential topics, which we will do. Think about what makes you different and what kind of quirks that you have and then just kind of start writing on something and try to develop that idea or emotion or feeling that you're trying to convey through that. Again, it should be something that the essay should tell college admissions officers something they don't already know. Um, they should ensure they're writing about something that isn't mentioned elsewhere on their uh, application so the college can get a better idea about who you are. We're going to be doing this outline work together. Um, we're going to be reading it. We're going to make sure that we focus on the opening sentence and make sure that just like the cover letter, it kind of hooks you in immediately. Um, we're going to do all the editing, submitting together as a class. Um, and so a lot of this here are, a lot of these tips here are just kind of reiterating things that we'll do together. So what is most important to know right now is the college essay describes a moment in your life, an interest, a hobby, a passion of yours that is not relevant in your application itself. Three things that college boards see a lot, three different essay topics and their thoughts on it are the following. You might think maybe I shouldn't write my college essay on this if you're thinking about doing it, which might be hard for some of you because it's your whole life to do this, um, but they are cliches. So just be wary that if you write an essay like this, the college is probably going to see a lot of essays like this and you won't stand out. So you wanna stand out in this. Um, I do know too, these are important, these essays. I Used to work in the registrar's office at Assumption when I went to Assumption. Um, I would see college essays coming through. I would see that they would get marked up on. Um, I would see that colleges would write or they would circle grammatical errors inside them or they would write like interesting comment, 
interesting student or something on the top of it. Um, I even saw that the admissions board would send letters to certain students, certain standout students, um, and say, like, we really enjoyed your essay. Like, thank you for submitting that. It was so interesting. It was one of the, like, best essays that we've read, something like that. So they do care. They do take notice on this, and this can affect your application in a very, very positive way. So three cliches. The first one is the big game essay. I know a lot of you might be thinking, oh, this would be a great moment to write about my life is this big standout moment um, of when I won this big game. And it was, it was a lot of adversity. Um, it says one potential pitfall of a sports focused essay is that students spend too much time describing what happened in the game, meet or competition, and not enough time talking about how it affects them personally. So they don't want a play by play of everything that happened. They want to know what, what, came of that, um, what you found through that um, about yourself, what you discovered. So it says the self-awareness of the student is what they want to see. Um, showing up for the teammates, contributing positively, um, it shows character. So that's what they want to see. They don't want to hear about the game and hear how you won. They want to hear how it influenced you, impacted you, changed you, or um, showed character, showed how you developed an understanding of yourself. Um, another common response is a sports-related injury. Again, remember, it matters what you gain from that injury, whether it be a work ethic, um, dedication, patience. They want to know that. They don't want to know the details of your injury. Uh, essays that focus on service-based activities. I'll be honest, I did this cliche one when I entered into college, and now teaching the college essay, I see that it was a boring and cliched thing to do. So essays about service to others, um, either at home or abroad, can be moving but difficult to effectively write because you only have such a short amount of space to develop it. So again, focus on something that you think you gained, truly gained something from, not simply because you think that the college wants to hear you write about that thing. Finally, essays that focus on a meaningful relationship. Um, students don't have to write about a major turning point in their essays. It says they can just reflect on day-to-day -day life and relationships with a parent, a grandparent, another key figure. Again, this is a cliche, but again, we're looking at how that relationship has affected them and shaped them. We don't just want to know all the great things about grandma. We want to know how grandma has shaped you, influenced you, changed you uh, throughout the course of your life. Um, again, you can look at a strong relationship you have with your sibling. That wouldn't be mentioned on your application perhaps, but it shows that you're a good person. You're caring, you're empathetic, you're understanding, you're able to, um, you're able to create deep bonds with people. These are important. We'll look at two examples together right now to see maybe what direction we could go down, um, what interests maybe we could focus on for our admissions essays. So this, if this is something that you're considering going to college, you will have to write this essay. And I'll show you the different prompts um, that you may have to answer to if you're using the Common App, which most schools do use the Common App. Um, but let's start with some examples. So. The first example I like because I think it is kind of relevant to um, people at a trade school because this is a very outdoorsy interest and people as stereotypically at a trade school do like to kind of work with their hands and be outdoors more. So let's read this college essay um, and we'll talk about strengths of it. We'll talk about areas we think we could revise or improve on. I kept a firm grip on the rainbow trout as I moved the lure from its lip. Then, my heart racing with excitement, I lowered the fish to the water and watched it flash away. I remained hooked. I caught that 10-inch fryling five years ago on Fall Creek using a $5 fly rod given to me by my neighbor, Gil. The creek is spectacular as it cascades down the 150-foot drop of Ithaca Falls. Only 150 feet further, however, it runs past a decrepit gun factory and underneath a graffitied bridge before flowing adjacent to my high school and out to Cayuga Lake. Aside from the falls, the creek is largely overlooked. Nearly all of the high school students I know who cross that bridge daily do so with no thought to the creek below. When I was a toddler, my mom say I used to point and ask, what, what, what? Even now, my inquisitive nature is obvious. Unlike my friends, I had noticed people fly fishing in Fall Creek. Mesmerized by their graceful casts, I pestered Gil into teaching me. From that first thrilling encounter with the trout, I knew I needed to catch more. I had a new string of questions. I wanted to understand trout behavior, how to find them, and what they ate. There was research to do. I devoted myself to fly fishing. I asked questions. I woke up at 4 a.m. to fish before school. I spent days not catching anything. Yet, I persisted. 
The kids' book of fishing was replaced by Norman McLean's A River Runs Through It. Soon, Ernest Hemingway's essays found their place next to Trout Unlimited magazines by my bed. I sought teachers. I continued to fish with Gil, and at his invitation, joined the local Trout Unlimited chapter. I enrolled in a fly tying class. There, I met Ken, a soft-spoken molecular biologist who taught me to start each fly I make by crimping the hook to reduce harm to the fish, and Mike, our sarcastic deadhead lawyer who turns over rocks at all times of the year to match the hatch and figure out which insects fish are eating. Thanks to my mentors, I can identify and create almost every type of northeastern mayfly, caddy's fish, and stonefly. The more I learned, the more protective I felt of the creek and its inhabitants. My knowledge of mayflies and experience fishing in many New York streams led me to notice the lack of blue-winged olive mayflies in Fly Creek. I figured out why while discussing water quality with my AP biology class. Lead from the gun factory had contaminated the creek and ruined the mayfly habitat. Now, I participate in stream cleanup days, have documented the impact of invasive species on trout and other native fish, and have continued to explore the effects of pollutants on waterways in my AP environmental science class. Last year on a frigid October morning, I started a conversation with the man fishing next to me. Banks, I later learned, is a contemporary artist who nearly died struggling with a heroin addiction. When we met on the creek these days, we talk about casting techniques, aquatic insects, and fishing ethics. We also talk about the healing powers of fly fishing. I know Banks would agree with Henry David Thoreau, who wrote, quote, Many men lay so much stress on the fish which they catch or fail to catch, and on nothing else, as if there was nothing else to be caught. Initially, my goal was to catch trout. What I landed was a passion. Thanks to that first morning on Fall Creek, I found a calling that consumes my free time, compels me to teach fly fishing to others, and drives what I want to study in college. I'll be leaving Fall Creek soon. I am eager to step into new streams. This is a college essay. This is information about the applicant that is not included on the application itself. And this, again, helps the reader of this essay, the person who is looking to say, yes, you can get into college or no, you can't get into college, get to know them well enough and better enough um, that they can make that judgment as to if they want to accept them or not. So let's think about this because this was a quite compelling essay, very interesting, very well said, well put. Let's talk about it. Let's break it down with some questions. So no pun intended. Does the writer hook the reader in with the first sentence or paragraph in your opinion? Why or why not? To know that we've got to go back and look at it. I kept a firm grip on the rainbow trout as I moved the lure from its lip. Then my heart racing with excitement, I lowered the fish, fish to the water and watched it flash away. I remained hooked. Would you say this was compelling? I personally, an English teacher, would say absolutely yes. It starts on great imagery from tactile imagery, which is pretty rare, keeping a firm grip on the rainbow trout. You can kind of picture keeping a firm grip on something, removing the lure from the lip. You can kind of see that happening if you're a person who fishes. Um, your heart racing with excitement. Again, tactile, we can feel how excited this person was, lowering the fish in the water and watched it flash away. Beautiful imagery language here. And using this pun, I remained hooked. Hooked, right? So you were fishing with a hook um, and then you have remained hooked on the sport of fishing. You really enjoyed it. So I would say, so here we might say, yes, the applicant hooks the reader in with the first sentence and following sentences. Um, clever use of puns and detailed imagery really puts the reader into the scene and captures the reader's interest right away. Um, so right away, this writer has done a really nice job and an effective job giving us this information. What parts of this essay show that the reader is a strong applicant? So whether it be word choices, descriptions, how the writer shows character, explain. In my humble opinion, I think this third paragraph here shows some really nice skills in terms of, again, talking about description. So look at this imagery. Um, a 10-inch fryling five years ago on Fall Creek. It's almost kind of poetry in the FFF repetition sound, that alliteration, um, but it also tells you a lot of details. It's a $5 fly rod, 10-inch filing fish, your neighbor gill. There's a lot of um, details here. Word choice saying spectacular as it cascades down the drop of Ithaca Falls, describing the gun factory as decrepit, right? It's talking about a graffiti bridge. So all of these images are beautiful. The word choice is 
higher level, right? Um, and it talks about how this narrator, this writer, um, all the high school students I know pass over that bridge, but no one thinks about the creek below except the writer. So they're differentiating themselves, making themselves seem different, more curious than other people or more curious than who else would be applying to the school. A person who cares more about nature than maybe the other people who might be applying to this college. So differentiating themselves, seeming unique, these are things that we want to do in our essays. Words like mesmerized, graceful, calling people a soft-spoken molecular biologist or a sarcastic deadhead lawyer, right? Again, these great details that show a mastery of language um, and a person who is intuitive, who understands people and who is um, good at collaborating with others. So all kinds of characteristics that colleges want to see. So what we could say here, the writer shows a good character in this, someone who's intuitive, understands other people, enjoys working with others, which are strong skills that colleges want to see in their applicants. And the writer also shows that he or she is curious, unique, cares about nature in a way that makes him or her stand out compared to other people or applicants. One other thing I want to point out too is um, what makes the writer a strong applicant, what is kind of shown really subtly hints dropped here. Um, look at how many times, right? AP Science, AP Bio, and then AP Environmental Science this person is in. Um, so kind of subtly dropping in like, yeah, I take AP courses, right? So, so additionally, the mentioning of AP courses shows that the writer is motivated and experienced with college level work because that is what an AP course is, right? Advanced placement, college level work. What extra information does an admissions officer learn about the writer from this piece directly or indirectly? So this can include things that the writer understands about him or herself or hobbies or interests. And we find out um, about the writer's passion. They have a passion for fishing. That was thanks to um, a lot of hard work, dedication. He or she said waking up before 4 a.m. so they could fish before school. Um, it's a calling that consumes free time, compels them to teach, which is a very noble endeavor, um, and drives what I want to study in college. So the college learns more about what the applicant wants to do in college and why, um, and we learn what that applicant wants um, and what that applicant enjoys to do in their free time. So the admissions officer learns about the applicant's hobby, what they would like to do in their free time and why it's important to them, and the officer also learns what the applicant wants to study in college and why science. Um, what about this piece is unique from other applicants? Um, I would say simply the subject matter. Uh, I've read a lot of college essays and none of them have written about fishing and especially in such an artful way like this where they use really vivid descriptions and um, imagery here. So I would say... So we see this piece is unique from that of other applicants because of the unusual topic. Also the passion with which the applicant writes stands out. You can tell they are truly devoted to this topic. Finally, the writer shows a great skill at writing using vivid sensory details and imagery to show a clear command over the English language. This is something that other applicants might not have. They might be lacking in their application essays and so that makes this writer stand out. Are there any other parts of this essay that could be revised? For example, are any parts wordy, confusing, not descriptive enough? What do you think? In my mind, although this paragraph is pretty important because it shows that he's able to collaborate with other people and that he has um, diverse people with whom he speaks, so he has a lot of like really different and interesting connections, I'm not 100% sure that it's necessary to include it. If this essay did not have this paragraph, I would say that nothing about the content of the essay would change. I wouldn't think anything was missing or different. I almost just feel like this is a lot of extra information um, simply because the writer wanted to put this quote in. So they could have maybe woven that quote in a little bit more artfully elsewhere. So I might suggest perhaps the third to last paragraph could be cut or reworked. It doesn't seem as relevant to the rest of the essay. All right, so we see this first really strong example, in my opinion, of a college entrance essay. They do keep it exactly under the word limit of 650 words, and they make it 648. Um, so you have to be really wary too that your essay is keeping underneath that word limit because again um, the college will not read over 650 words. They simply don't want to. So 650 or under which this essay did a really nice job of doing. Um, so your essay is about just kind of any formative moment in your life or some understanding or hobby or passion of yours. This person chose fishing and this person's, I like this one, this one's a personal favorite of mine, very interesting here, uh, written by 
Benjamin. It starts with the question, is it bigger than a bread box? Yes. So let's read this. It should sound very familiar to the 20 questions game that you play. Um, Benjamin, is it bigger than a bread box? Yes. I've always been tall, decidedly tall. Yet my curiosity has always surpassed my height. Starting at a young age, I would ask countless questions from how heavy is the earth to where does rain come from? My curiosity displayed in questions like these has truly defined me as a person and as a student. Therefore, it is not surprising that I became transfixed the first time I played 20 questions, the electronic version of 20 questions. Somehow a little spherical device guessed what I was thinking. This piece of technology sparked my curiosity and instilled in me a unique interest in 20Q. This interest would later reveal valuable character traits of mine while also paralleling various facets of my life. Does it strive to learn? Yes. I became determined to discover how 20 questions guessed correctly. After some research, I discovered artificial intelligence, more specifically artificial neural networks, systems which learn and improve themselves. This idea fascinated me. I wanted to learn more. I read avidly, seeking and absorbing as much information as I could. When given the opportunity years later, I signed up for the first computer programming class available to me. I found myself in an environment I loved. I would stay after class, going in during free periods, make my own app, and work over cloud-based IDEs. I prized the freedom and the possibilities. Is it driven? Yes. After my introduction to 20Q, I began to play 20 Questions, the traditional parlor game, and became determined to rival the guessing accuracy of the artificial intelligence. At first, I was mediocre. However, through long car rides with family, good-natured, yet heated competitions with friends, logical strategy, and time, I became more effective. I discovered the secrets to success, practice, and perseverance. Does it apply what it learns? Yes. As 20Q implements what it learns, so do I. Throughout high school, I applied the secret of my practice to my basketball career. I spent countless hours sharpening my skills in 90 degree summer heat to 20 degree late, cold, um, late winter colds, countless afternoons playing pickup games with my friends, and countless weekends traveling to AAU basketball tournaments. As a result, I became a starter for my school's varsity team. I applied another secret. This time, the secret of perseverance by dedicating myself to physical therapy after knee surgery in order to quickly return to football. Later that year, I became the first player in my grade to score a varsity touchdown. Does it attempt to better itself? Yes. Once I became proficient at 20 questions, I strengthened my resolve to become masterful. To do so, I needed to become a skillful inquisitor and to combine that with my analytical nature and interpersonal skills, all of which are vital for success in 20 questions. Because I have been debating politics with my friends since eighth grade, I recognized that debate could sharpen these skills. I began to debate more frequently and later more effectively in English and government class, at the lunch table and family gatherings, and whenever the opportunity presented itself. This spurred in me an interest for how public policy and government work, leading me to attend Boise State and receive the nomination for the United States Senate Youth Program. Does it think deeply? Yes. So far, I've realized that thriving at 20 questions, just like life, is all about tenacity, rational, rationality, and interpersonal skills. I have found that, as in 20 questions, always succeeding is impossible. However, by persevering through difficulties and obstacles, favorable outcomes are often attainable. As I have become better at 20 questions, so too have I improved in many other aspects of my life. Nevertheless, I have realized I still have unbounded room to grow. And much like 20Q, I will continue to learn throughout my life and apply my knowledge to everything I do. Are you thinking of me? Yes. Such a clever essay um, combining elements of the 20 question game with this, which this applicant loves so much with um, details about themselves. So is it bigger than a bread box? It's, it's always like the first question of 20 questions if you ever played that game on the little electronic device. Um, and then it asks questions, does it strive to learn? It being the student, the applicant, right? Does Ben strive to learn? Yes, and he describes why. Is Ben driven? Yes, and he describes why. Does he apply what he learns? Does he attempt to better himself? Does he think deeply? And are you thinking of me? Yes. So super clever ending there. Um, I think that is it bigger than a bread box? Yes, this is how it starts. Does this hook us in right away? If we were going to review this, that very first question, are we hooked from the first sentence? Does the writer hook the reader in with the first sentence or paragraph? Why or why not? Yes, um, it's very clever, it's different, it's a unique approach, and it makes you wonder, like, what are they doing? What's their goal here? What's their, why are they trying to word it in a way that's so different from what we usually know? So yes.
so the writer uses a unique hook to grab the reader's attention and make them wonder where this unconventional essay could be going. Very interesting, very different. What parts of this essay show that the writer is a strong applicant, whether it be word choices, descriptions, or how the writer shows character? Explain. Um, there's a lot of elements that we could see here. Besides the fact that this writer shows a lot of intelligence by talking about 20 questions, also they talk about the different types of things that they've won. They have um, are very good at 20 questions. Um, they're the first person in the grade to score a varsity touchdown. They received a nomination for the United States Senate Youth Program. So again, it shows the different kinds of recognitions and awards that they've received. Um, it talks about that cliche, um, how he had physical therapy after a knee surgery in returning quickly to football. Did that mean that this essay was specifically about that injury? No, but it did show perseverance and dedication, which is what the college wants to see. So these are the things that you can accidentally kind of see about the, the student, which we can put here. So the admissions officer learns about Benjamin's perseverance, dedication, and intelligence through this essay. And also what shows that the writer is a strong applicant, the writer's clever use of words and the 20Q hook shows intelligence. Additionally, the writer mentioning awards and honors that he's had shows his dedication and motivation for academics, sports, and life. The writer details his debate skills and creativity, which will be very important in college and ends on the unique note, are you thinking of me? Yes, right? So we learn some things uh, through the piece or through the writer. And what is unique about this piece? Pretty much everything. Um, the formatting is extremely unique and the way that um, the writer kind of uses short sen sentences and also longer kind of paragraphs to show again, a command or a mastery over the English language, which is something that you need if you're going to do college level writing. So the applicant's piece is unique in its formatting of the essay in question and answer format. It shows a mastery over language and spelling and grammar conventions, which is impressive to an admissions officer. And are there any parts of this essay that could be revised? For example, any part that is too wordy, confusing, or not descriptive enough? For me, this whole essay is a bit long. It is exactly 650 words because the word Benjamin wouldn't be included in that word count. So um, this writer really pushed the boundaries of how much a college is willing to read. While it is interesting, I think that if nothing else maybe to give in a suggestion the writer could cut down some of the parts um, specifically this one does it attempt to better itself um, we could have maybe combined with does it apply what it learns because applying what you learned is kind of bettering yourself in a way um, so maybe combining these two things but again it was thoughtfully um, kind of chunked up here with sports here and then um, United States Senate skills debate skills program here and we also learn maybe a bit of taste about um, what the writer might want to do in college so the college can kind of learn okay this they're probably going to do um, work in public policy or government work someday and that's they're going to take poli sci classes so um, that could be the only thing I suggest is maybe chopping down some parts but I mean it's no secret I'm pretty biased against this essay I really enjoyed reading it so there's not a lot for me um, to suggest to revise but if I had to suggest something I might say perhaps it's a little wordy um, and these two sections could perhaps be combined in a way or chopped down in a way. So perhaps the essay was a bit wordy at times. Two of the questions answers could be combined to condense. So we've gone through two of what I think are really strong examples of college application essays. We'll read the exact prompts, but basically you can write about whatever you want a little later. Um, and let's read together one more essay that you're going to read and evaluate yourself. We've read two essays that really push the boundaries of those 650 words. Um, and so this one's a little shorter to show you that you can write an exemplary college essay. That's a bit shorter, all right? So this one. Um, is just one page long. It says, using a flimsy piece of printer paper, I remember folding my first paper crane. Reading instructions off a dusty origami book from my basement, my fingers fumbled with the paper, folding, unfolding, refolding, and possibly some frustration-induced crumpling. Nearly an hour later, with little creases scattered across its body and a misaligned beak, it was clear that origami wasn't a natural talent of mine. Despite its deformities, there was an endearing quality to the bird I couldn't quite explain. After 16 folds, it resembled the paper only in color and material. 
I would fold countless other designs until my room was covered with creations from simple paper boats to intricate seven-part lotus flowers. The joy I found in origami lied in the fact that I had the freedom to invent anything. With each fold, creativity flowed through my fingers, converting curiosity of the potential of each fold into an irrepressible desire to create more. It is what motivated me to read about 2D kinematics and win a projectile motion challenge and understand the chemistry behind qualitative analysis of cations in the for a lab. Everything I could ever want to know and more is right at my fingertips. From the change in weight I feel in a moving elevator to the chemical reactions that cause the plastic stars in my room to glow, science is a field that permeates every single aspect of my life. I know that my curiosity to understand the world around me nurtures my love for science. So your assignment for today, which is going to be in the description of the video, is to fill out today's Google form on the college essay. Um, write your name so you can get credit for today. Reread the third college essay I showed you. I just read that to you. Here it is again if you need to reread it. When you're done with that, you say got it. Pretend you're an applications director at a college and put some good thought into the following questions about the admissions essay above. Answer each of the following questions in at least two to three full sentences. So in your opinion, does the writer hook the reader in with the first sentence or paragraph? Why or why not? What parts of this essay show that the writer is a strong applicant, whether it be word choices, descriptions, or how the writer shows character? Explain. What extra information does an admissions officer learn about the writer from this piece, directly or indirectly? So this can include the things that the writer understands about him or herself, or hobbies or interests. In your opinion, what about this piece is unique from other applicants? In your opinion, are there any parts of this essay that could be revised? For example, parts that are wordy, confusing, or not descriptive enough. And finally, of the three application essays that we've looked at today, which essay was the most impressive to you and why? In other words, which applicant, if you were a college admissions officer, would you admit to the college based on what they've written? Today, you acknowledge that you'll receive an extra copy of this college essay sent to your email along with any other relevant notes for your convenience. Again, I'll send this to you so you have kind of a model of how I'd like you to fill out this. Put some serious thought into this. Um, tomorrow, we're going to start brainstorming and learn the exact assignments for our college admissions essay or our cover letter. Um, we'll brainstorm for both of them. And then on Thursday, we'll start the draft work. So things are getting exciting. Things are getting real. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Bye-bye.